Greetings, everyone. Here we are again. ELT Techniques Teachers Worldwide. Where are you? Can we hear from you? Ahmed is here from Yemen. Youssef is here from Morocco. If I don't know where you're from, please let us know. Barbara. Dr. Nelly Deutsch is in the house. Javier is with us from Spain, Greece. There's where Barbara is from. Nabila from Algeria, Bulgaria. Wow, lots of different people from lots of different countries. Yay, Shelly Terrell's here from San Antonio. Hello, Nasanja in Croatia. <laughs> Woo, look at this. Lots of lots of people here. <laughs> yeah, Sylvia, Sylvia, Sylvia. This is a, indeed an honor for me to be here with the one and only. I always say that when I talk about Shelly Sanchez Terrell. Well, she certainly, we are all the one and onlys, but this is a very special one and only to me uh, as someone who has only really recently gotten into online teaching and using tech and in education. I've learned so much from uh, this wonderful person and uh, I'm gonna let her tell you more about who she is and, and what she does. Uh, but first, I just want, she asked me to do, to maybe make a rap at some point about her. I, I didn't do, I did a song for all of us, but I thought free, I, got, I got inspired by Sylvia Guinan today. Uh, she said the invincible, irresistible <laughs> Shelly Sanchez to Russ. She almost started to, a, a little a little rhyme there, a little a little rap. So I was thinking <laughs> she is invincible. She's breaking down tech to easy principles, making it simple for all teachers to get involved. And then I had some other thing in my head going on with Shelly Sanchez Terrell. What can I say? There's so much to tell. Well, we can ask Sylvia Guinan. She was starting to, uh, and then you know what happened? Some other things happened. I, ha I couldn't finish my song. But you know, I, I started something. It's a work in progress. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, English teachers around the world, I'm gonna turn things over to the invincible, irresistible, Shelly Sanchez Terrell. Shelly, if you need me, just say the word and I'll come back in. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much. I've never been introduced with the rap before, so um, I think it's, it's quite, uh, that was the best intro yet. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, it's so nice to see each of you here. And I saw some of you um, already did your your tasks, like Yosef and um, uh, Yolanda and some of the others as well. So I'm very, very excited to see your pre task I've responded to some of the voice threads and the box of pox and uh, the discussion questions. Uh, don't worry if you didn't yet, Inyas, um, because I'm going to show you uh, some tricks or some options. Um, and if you have bad internet, then I will show you some options as well. Um, and you can always just contribute um, as part of a comment. So in case that you couldn't do, um, you couldn't register, then that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and start. Um, I'll let you know a little about me. If you've listened to links already, then you've already heard some stuff. Um, I teach online. I do this every uh, single day pretty much. I have students that I'm teaching um, from all over. I'm an online professor, so I actually run several courses. I'm from the United States, but I have taught learners um, all over the world, and I train teachers now. I've been to 26 countries. I travel um, every single month, <laughs> sometimes uh, every almost every other weekend. <laughs> um, and I train teachers. I've trained teachers from over 100 countries online. I run my own free online conference. I'm actually part of two. Um, I helped found the Reform Symposium conference. And so some of you, um, I've learned that you've done research. We love presenters. And I know Nellie does one as well, Dr. Nellie Doyle. She does an amazing one. Um, so that's something that you should look up because after you take this course, the best thing is to go out there and show us what you have done. So we, we're excited to see that. We're going to talk about uh, some digital tools and some free apps which are a great way to get your learners very excited about doing listening tasks. And as you might know, sometimes your learners aren't particularly excited about doing tasks. So uh, hopefully you'll find these to be very fun, but they're also pedagogically sound as well. And so we're going to look at some of the tasks that we're doing 
Um, so you can see that it's not that difficult. Let me go ahead and go here. Um, the, I love this quote by Larry King. When you think about the way that we learn, and your learners in particularly, and your language learners, the majority of the way we will spend our lives learning is through listening. But unfortunately, school systems don't exactly focus on developing listening skills. It's not something that we do proactively. It's not where we teach the process. And it's really important that we teach our learners the process. Now, there's different parts and aspects of that. One part is that we have to help our learners practice Every single day, we have to give them opportunities to do this. Uh, and once they develop their listening, this is tied to the other three skills. Most importantly, and you can type in the chat box, what are the four skills? And which one is listening the most closely tied to? <laughs> oh, well, look at this in just a sec. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Speaking, exactly. And for our students, many of them, um, their accents, the way they hear different types and respond to each other, their discussion, a majority of our students will not actually listen to English from native speakers because the majority of people in the world, there's about um, a 4 million, I think, that that I just saw in the English library that David Crystal did about two years ago in um, in in uh, Britain in London, and it said about four um, million speak English that are native speakers, but there's four hundred million that actually speak that are non. That means that English isn't their first language. So it's important that our learners get to listen to um, from different speakers all over the world so that way they don't say, oh, I can't understand. Because right now, English has developed so much. There are different types of English all over the world. In India, you're going to hear words that are English. They're part of the English uh, lexicon um, for that part. And sometimes in Spanish as well, and Spain. So um, it's it's you've heard of English as a lingua franca. So it's important that our learners, I know teachers often want to say, Let's have our learners listen to native speakers. But I think it's more important that they listen to non-native speakers. Um, because if they don't, then they're not going to really be prepared for their careers in which they're going to be working with language learners from everywhere. So these are, tools will help them practice this in a daily basis. And the great thing about these tools is they come with a community. So the tools I'm going to introduce you to are a wonderful way for them um, to find communities online. They can practice on their own. They'll be motivated on their own. But also, you won't have to constantly um, assess to be the one who has to speak to them. I know when I teach my learners online, the first thing they tell me is, what's your Skype? And they want to have English lessons. And um, like a class like this, 2,000 or uh, 300, which I usually have online, it's very hard for me to have Skype conversations with 300 students. It's, it's pretty much not um, doable. So if you want to have some sleep, then you'll introduce them to these tools uh, because they can practice with each other, but they can also practice with English language learners all over the world. I'm showing you this um, slide because we're going to talk about digital tools and apps. Right now, I'm a, I have a resource. I'm putting it in our MOOC. Um, the main page, I'll be putting this afterwards, um, but it has a hundred listening tools and every single day I have found um, incredible tools that are wonderful that I use with my learners and they're free. But when you think of that, a hundred different tools, that's so overwhelming. So it's you can think of it like a buffet. And when you go to a buffet or you go to a big, large feast, like some of us enjoyed big meals for Thanksgiving or for the holidays, um, you can, everything looks great, but you can only serve one plate. And on your plate, you can fit about two, three, four items. That's what I want you to do. Look through all of this. Choose two or three items that as soon as you see it, you say, wow, that's going to be great for my learners. And when you, when you see a tool, I'll show you some today, but don't get overwhelmed. Don't try to do all of it. Look at two or three that you say, that's going to meet my 
um, students' needs. And those are the ones you want to try. Um, this is what it looks like. It's called a Listly. And the great thing about Listly is you can click on any of these and it'll, it'll take you to that page. These are recordings of um, slide presentations and things I've done in the past. You'll see a bunch of things. Um, in the bottom is a description. Some of them will be for your mobile device. So we will look at some very cool tools for that and why I think that's important. But the next one, um, some of them are for just simple things like dictation. They can do things like that. Um, listening quiz. The phone rang and I lost um, Shelly. Do it. Um, but I like the symbol because it integrates. It says the ears, the eyes, undivided attention, and the heart. So in other words, our learners, when we think about the listening task, a lot of you in the comments, and it, it's most teachers around the world, most English language teachers around the world, do when we are answering the questions about listening, which listening task, the listening task that were in the book. And, and the majority of language teachers in the world do do this, so, so that's okay. But we need to go from there because, unfortunately, the book doesn't capture the um, undivided attention in the heart of our students. So it's important we give them opportunities to use tools online where they can um, talk about different topics they want. They can talk about themselves. And at the same time, they listen to others. They join a global conversation, and they can listen to others who do that as well. Um, so we're going to take a look at these tools. EnglishClub.com, though, says about what is listening. In EnglishClub.com, for those of you who teach online, you definitely need to join this. There's nearly 100,000 language um, students there from all over the world. And the reason about um, the English club is they're very active. They're actually the most a one of the most active communities I have seen. The other most active community that I've seen, it's free, by the way, and you can have your students join. But one of the most, um, the only other most active one that I've seen is actually Jason. Jason um, does a really great um, language community online. I think it's like 80,000 or something, Jace. I don't know how many you have now. Um, so I look at these kind of things to say where there's active um, communities where the students actually do things. And English Club is very good with that. But they talk about listening for one of the four skills. Um, and it says it is actually the first of our four language skills. And it talks about what it is. Um, so you may di you might identify it uh, differently, but for language learners, they identify it as involving the sounds of speech, processing them into words and sentences. When we listen to a conversation, when we listen to a teacher, when we listen to another language learner, our students, what we have to do is we hear what they say, and it comes in, and then our experiences, our knowledge, our English speaking level, all of that goes into what we interpret, the message that we hear. Now, it's great to understand this process and practice this with our learners so they understand that. Uh, one of the games that you probably play, which is a great listening game, I have taught te um, students um, English from two years old all the way to 80 years old. And so I, I've, I've been doing this since 1994. And one of the games I like to play with all levels um, that requires no technology is the Chinese whisper game or the whisper game, the gossip, where you like to go, um, you whisper something, and then the other student comes. And at the end, um, you find that it's very, very different. That's the, one of the first listening activities I do with my students so they understand that process and we talk about that process. Um, and that's a very fun way for you to introduce 
listening process to say, look, what you say isn't always going to be interpreted um, by others well. So how will you be more effective in sending your message? How will you be more effective in listening, developing your listening skills, so you can make sure that that message does come across? So what types, it's your turn in the chat box, tell us what type of listening activities you do with your students. And this is actually one of the questions that you get to answer on either the box of pop or the the um the voice thread or okay Google Translate that's a good one uh, listening to podcasts another really great one listening from cassettes yes definitely <laughs> boring textbook ones well that happens sometimes <laughs> a lot majority of teachers do do that Simon says yes with small kids and songs yes those are great ones. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I love Google Chat. Dicto glasses, yes. Um, clippings, exactly. Listening from news, songs. All of these are great, fantastic listening tasks. And that's a great thing is you can find a listening task at recent National Public Radio Online. Yes, exactly. Um, there's different things you can do. Here, they give a few in, lit, in EnglishClub.com. Um, how to hear English everywhere. Um, they talk also about dictation. Uh, by the radio, the news, some of the things you had already put, podcasts, um, This Week in History. So there's a lot of things that they list there, but there's even more. So I want to start with showing you different types of listening tasks teachers do online. And then, because that's what your job's going to be as a post-task. Your post-task is to create your own online quiz or game. And we'll see the difference. Uh, there's five tools that I recommend that I would like you to use. You can use any tool, though. I'm just going to give you five to choose from. You can choose one of those five. You do One of them you don't have to register for. But there are four that you have to register for. And then what we're going to do is, as a community, all over 2,000 of us, we're going to take your online game or quiz and then we'll give you feedback, okay? Now, of course, your feedback um, is rel related to your teaching situation. So each of us is very important uh, when you submit the form, when you submit your answers, um, and it's through a Google form, so that way I can go and I can give you feedback on each one. So I will actually give you feedback. If you turn it in, I will give you feedback because I know um, tools online where I can provide feedback for 2000 so that's great. It saves me a lot of time. <laughs> so that's one reason to know these tools. That's why I love them. Um, so I will give feedback for each of you. So please, um, and I'm excited to see your post tasks, um, but please describe your learners. That's to be part of it so that way we can better assess to you, okay? Um, each of you that turns it in, if you don't turn it in, I can't. I, and if you don't do it through the form, then I can't give you feedback. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my favorite tool in the world, Kaizena. I didn't put it on here, but yes, I'm using actually Formula Integrating Technology. So, uh, <laughs> but Kaizena is, oh, that's just one of the best tools ever. So, um, I hope you learn about that later. Um, so, one of the first things that you can do for online tasks is dictation. I often put, okay, so I have a wiki for each of my students. I have a wiki for the four to six year olds, um, and then I had it for the teenagers, the um, 10 to 12 year olds. All of them get a separate wiki. And when I put the wiki, I give them a choice of tasks they can do. They have a list, just like we do here. You have, um, yes, when you have like, um, you have a list of choices, and I think it's very important for our students to have choices. So uh, what one of the choices that they actually really love a lot are the dictations, and these are free online. The great thing about the dictation is you click, you can choose your level. You can choose um, your language level, and then you can choose the speed. You listen to whatever it's coming. You choose different topics. And after you choose the topics, you can go and you can um, choose the speed. So if they're at different levels, which your stars, some of them are going to have higher list, um, skills and then others aren't. So they can do this at their own. 
and then they have to type in whatever they heard. So they can keep doing this again and again, and it self-assess them. You do not have to assess them with this type of activity. So it's very important that um, that we have these kind of activities, and then it, it'll assess them. These things that I put in a wiki that my students can choose. Now that was English. Um, this is Ello, which you probably have heard of. Ello is um, one of the. It has literally. Over a thousand listening I, um, tasks and tools, games, ideas. Ello is one of the best tools that you can have. It's an online listening library of over a thousand different tools, activities, videos, everything. I'm going to show you just one part of it that I think is very good for language learners. Um, and this is where you do the video. And the great thing about the video, they show an audio slideshow world. And what they do is um, you can click on any of the speakers. You can tell Kat is from what country. Can anybody tell what country Kat is from? She's speaking English, but what country is she from? You can put it in the chat box. <laughs> and then you can hear that. Germany, exactly. So you can click on any speaker to play the audio, which I like. You also have the transcript, and you have the vocabulary. So I think those are all really great things for learners. It's free. All of these are free. Here's another different type of listening task. This is the kind that I do with my four to six year old. So the other ones you could do with teenagers because it looked like it was for teenagers, right? And then here um, you could use this task over here for your adult students. You could even do it for teens, but I tend to think that adult students um, like the dictations better. Um, my teenagers like this. They can hear from our uh, Neiman College. So I work with a six-year-old. My four to six-year-old love these adventure games. And the great thing about these adventure games is they make noises. Um, so they actually tell them to do things. And, and they give them ex um, expression. So if, if you go and you play your listening task that you do today, you can, I mean, that you do for this particular class, you can choose to make an adventure game like this, okay? Um, so each of them talks. I'm going to see if I can get down for them to talk. Let's see, the wonder pet. So you can at least hear the sound. So you won't be able to actually um, see this because I don't want to do screen share because some of you may not be able to um, listen to that. But I do want you to try and hear this. So let's see if I can get you to hear this. Dark. Let's see. It may work. It may not work. <laughs> okay. Here. Here we go. Here, here we go. Okay. So you, you should be able to hear it in about uh, just a minute. And they have so many. Okay. So this one saves the dinosaur, but they actually have ten. And the great thing about these adventure games is they give instructions by audio, but they also show the text, and the students have to um, complete the task. The adventure pits, for example, in this particular scene, they have to dress them. OK, so it says it will play very soon. Ah, or maybe not. Technical difficulties. So we'll keep continue, and then you'll hear that in just a sec. Now, this is another game called AudioPuzzler.com. I recently found it. The great thing about AudioPuzzler is it comes out with text, and then these little circles are sounds. So what you have to do is you click on the actual sound. I'm going to see if I can get the arrow here. Uh, let's see. Is this the power? Okay, so you have to match it. Oh, here's the adventure pet. Here. Hi, I'm Winnie with my friends Mingling and Tuck. We're the Wonder Pets. Are you ready to go on a wonderful trip with us? Click the arrow on the right to stop. Before we go out, we have to dress up. First, click on the clothes. Then click on us. Okay, so that was just to give you an idea of the, um, the Wonder Pet. So you can he see how that's a great listening task and an adventure um, for different types of um, very young learners in particularly. 
Okay, so we can come out, <laughs> and then we do the audio puzzler. The great thing about audio puzzler is that it takes different sounds. It takes a chunk of sound, and that's one of the best ways to learn. If you study Vygotsky, if you study the social uh, cognitive theory, which I'm a bit, um, also like Pablo Freire, different types, um, uh, Banduda, Piaget, all of them. Um, one of the things that, they, that you hear often is chunking of language. And that's some of the problems with the listening tasks that we have with um, the problems with the listening tasks that we have in books is a lot of times we have this long, long passage and our students can't process that. Sometimes they need practice processing just small little chunks. And when they get the chunks, then they can take that small chunk of language um, and when they learn that, then they can match it with others as well. So on Audio Puzzler, you hear these little sound noise and then you have to type in what they say. You can also check to see the wording and stuff like that. You just click on any of those and it'll show that. Now when you look at those, oops, okay, when you look at those, what you see is um, here, you double click the audio bubble, the bubble to pop it in here, the audio, type in the, and where do you get these texts from? Well, I said undivided attention and from the heart. Well, the great thing about Audio Puzzler is it takes all of these from YouTube. It actually has these really great things that they can choose from. For example, how many of you have seen the movie Fight Club? Do you know that um, famous scene where they say, what are the eight rules of Fight Club? Well, this is one of the audios that they have a quiz of. So they have quiz from YouTube. So those are things that students are very interested in. So they can see some of their favorite movies and they can they can play it with audio puzzle. So um, the, kid, the students like that. Now, to practice different types of, um, when you're thinking of your quizzes, these are things that you can think of. I mean, I'm going to show you tools where you could replicate something like Audio Puzzler, where you could replicate something like um, Adventure, the Adventure Pets, all of these things. And what you, you um, might think, oh, that's going to be very hard. But the tools I'm going to show you are free, and they make it to where you can make this game in 15, 10 minutes in some of cases. So you can make very fast, these quizzes very fast, with these free tools. You just have to register for them in some cases, well, most cases. Um, here's another example. And I think this is a very uh, cool, easy way um, for pronunciation as well, is they have a matching game on many things. Many things actually has hundreds of games as well, listening game. Um, but I like this one because what they do is you click on and you listen and then you click somewhere else and you try to match the sound together. So you match the listening with the actual like b b or t t. So if you want them to practice this way, I think that's a very fun way for them to practice those sounds. It is the memory game, exactly. Uh, and Elena, Maria, and Christina were saying um, it is the uh, memory game, but what it is is it's with listening. So I think that's a fantastic idea. So these are to give you ideas about the kind of um, games you can create because you could do this matching game as well. Um, and of course, related to your subject, um, whatever you're teaching at the time, whether you're teaching animals, whether you're teaching um, the T8 sounds, um, and whatever you're teaching in your situation, that's what your game will be about. So let's continue. Um, these are some other places that I like for language learners that are free that I put in the week as well. My absolute favorite is EnglishCentral.com. It's one of the best listening tools. It incorporates with YouTube. It's very interesting. And it has gamification. So in other words, here you see top scores. They're competing against each other, which is uh, studies have shown, research has shown that with this, um, students are very motivated on their own to be able to accomplish a task as well. Some of my other favorite tools, um, lyrics training, they listen to lyrics. Everybody loves music, so <laughs> that's always a great way to learn English. So lyrics training is a wonderful one as well. Um, and it's gamified as well. They actually compete against each other as well. And there's literally hundreds of tools like this. 
listenandwrite.com, the same thing. You listen to small passages, but it's YouTube videos again. They added the transcript, Desperate Housewives, um, Girls Legos are a hit, but why do girls need special Legos? So there's all of these interesting things that your students have the choice to listen to on their own. You can give it as um, an ism a mission, and it scores them. And for me, when I choose things that my students do offline, then what I do is I have them choose the topic, then they have to give me the score. Um, and they submit it through a Google form. And you're going to go ahead, and this is the process you're going to go through. You're going to do it through a Google form. And then I have their grade. Whatever the score is, then that's their grade. They choose and they scored it for them. I didn't have to go score it. They just tell me. Now, how do I know whether or not, you're probably asking, well, how do I know they're telling me the right score? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Um, I have them take a screenshot. They have to take a screenshot of it. it and you know what? Some of the students, okay, and some of you will say, well, what if they do it again and again until they get 100? Well, for me, that's a good thing. I think that if my student is smart enough to practice and do the quizzes again and again until they get 100, I think that's great. <laughs> then they just did that for, you know, I didn't have to tell them to do it 100 times to practice or listen. So I, I'm okay with that. That's the kind of teacher I am. Um, and then finally, I want to share Sean Banfield's listenaminute.com. He has hundreds and hundreds of free lessons. So that's the other thing as well. When you're a teacher, you don't have to go and, and, and make all of these things yourself. There are so many incredible thousands um, and thousands of free quality lesson plans out there for listening, quality listening tasks. You can put them in a wiki. You can have your students um, do them. You can quickly do these, and they're going to be very, very, very good um, uh, lesson plans. And from all of these sites I just showed, I think they're wonderful. Now, some of you might do other types of listening things, um, and this is a little bit different. Now, there's a few tools out there, um, and these tools are really great for listening tasks. Um, and one of them is Blabberize. Now, Blabberize is one of those where you can um, make the mouth speak of your um, students. And I'm going to show you a free app on, as well. Um, one of the, the apps is um, that I just found out is Chatterpix. And we'll look at that. And Chatterpix is Blabberize. It's like Blabberize, but it's a free mobile app. So you can use it with your, your students can do it on the phone, which makes it very cool. I love mobile devices. Um, you've probably used Boki. Young learners, Blabberize and Boki are big hits. They're wonderful. You can uh, basically you use a voice. Now this is the older Boki, so um, you no longer can use phone, but you can use um, their microphone. And in this case, let's say you don't have a microphone. That's okay because you don't need to do that with Boki. Um, the great thing about Boki is what you do is um, you can do the text. And you just type it in, and it'll speak it for you. And you can choose different accents. So that's one of the great things is these tools are smart enough to allow you to choose different accents as well. They're not just American, or they're not just Canadian, or they're not just British English, but they're English. You can find, um, if speak, you can choose to have English speaking from India. Um, you can have it from Asia. I mean, so it, it's very good. Um, and then finally, the last tool that I'll show you. Um, before we talk about our task is go animate. Go animate is my absolute one of favorite tools ever. It looks like this. You have pairs speaking. And when I teach face to face a lot of times, my students, I have had classes of a hundred. I have had classes of fifty. All in one class. So for me, one of the things that I have to do is um I have to put um go animate um I put them in pairs. And, and I pair and I group students for pretty much every single task. Um, and they have separate uh, practicing on their own. When they're in the wiki, um, they, they get to choose these tasks. So they do have their self-study. But I think grouping is extremely important for language learners. Um, and some people say, well, some people are, are um, by themselves and they work better by themselves. But the world is not like
at the world is um, especially if you're speaking English and you're working in an environment where you have to be multilingual, you're going to have to speak to others. So I think as many opportunities to get them to work in pairs or groups is the best. And GoAnimate does that well because you choose different characters and you can do role plays, you can do interviews. There's so many different things that you can do with GoAnimate. All of those tools are free. You do have to register for them. So now let's talk about pre-tasks. Well, one of the pre-tasks that we have is to add to a discussion. And our discussion is, first, what kind of listening tools do you use? With Well, first, actually, um, introduce yourself. So you'll say something like, hi, I'm Shelly from the U.S., from Texas. And then you can tell us, I teach young learners or I teach high school or, you know, um, it, let us know a little about you. I'm doing research on something, you know, whatever you want, just a 30-second introduction. And then after that, you will actually answer to this discussion questions, which is what do you think uh, about using, do you think it's effective, um, using listening tools that are free, digital tools, and mobile devices, mo free mobile apps, or mobile devices for practicing listening, for developing listening with your students. And so when you, you answer those, in, you have three options now, okay? So there's three options, even kind of four, okay? So I'm going to give you four options, okay? So what are our four options? I know it only lists two, but that's okay. Um, Voxapop, you do have to register. So you'll go to voxapop.com, and you only have to do, choose one of these tools. So choose one of four. Okay, <laughs> so if you want to do Voxapop, Voxapop is quite easy. You cannot do it if you're in Chrome. So it will not work in Chrome. You have to use it in Firefox. Um, you have to use this in, um, in, I think Safari too will work. And I haven't tried, um, yes, it's Java. So it was it weird in Safari? Okay. Then use it in Firefox. That's the best format I have. I have two browsers. I use Chrome for everything, but I also have Firefox because if I can't get it done in Chrome, then I can always do it in Firefox. Um, in Voxapop is also a little weird for Macs. I use Macs. I have a Mac. I use everything Apple pretty much. Um, and so one of the things that you can do is you sign up. This is the username, password. It takes about five minutes. You can put an icon. Um, it's been fast. It's, it doesn't have that much to register for. And then once you're registered, you can contribute to our online audio discussion. And these are the questions. What are your thoughts about the use of digital tools and mobile apps to improve listening skills? Um, and we already had somebody, uh, Yolanda, she already did her own. So you have a few options. You can either um, create your own box of pot thread, which is what um, Yolanda did, or you can contribute to mine, um, or you can contribute to each other's. Now, that's what ideally I would like you to do. I would like you to contribute to a mass one, because the mass one, then you're going to see the power of that tool. Um, and then the other question is what you can choose one of these. You don't have to answer all these questions. Um, you can make it short, it can be one minute. So this is what it looks like when you go to ours. You can go to the bit.ly ELT MOOC box, all lowercase. So you do that all lowercase, okay? No capitals or it won't go there. Or you can use the box of pop. It's just a very long link. When you go there, you just click on play and you can hear me speak. Now it says I'm from Germany and the reason why is because that was the, where I was living at before I moved to the U.S. So I moved back to the U.S. Um, and then it even has the text. You can add text. So the great thing is you can start the discussion. And if you start the discussion, then you can even add the text. And you can ask your students anything. Um, the people, Famous people actually use these things. So if you've ever heard of Jason Renshaw, um, he is an um, English raven. He has uh, made tons and tons and tons of books. Jason is one of the, the best, um, yes, he's a genius. I love Jason Renshaw. He's absolutely incredible. So one of the things it says is um, when, when Jason uses this, he's used it with a 1,000 learners online to practice for the TOEFL test. Uh, another famous name you might know is Nick Peachy. Nick Peachy has, you can, and you can join their discussions. They have free discussions here. Anybody can join them. 
So um, Nick TT does one of the best ones, uh, one of the best box of pops I've heard, um, which is he has a chain story. So he has about a hundred um, people or more from all over the world doing a chain story with box of pop, which I just think is awesome. So you can add to that as well. Um, let's say you want to record a message, okay? So uh, here's me, okay? I have it started with a discussion. You click record a message. You just go there, record a message after you're registered. And when you record a message, it's going to show with a box. You'll be number two or three, depending. So you can listen to everybody's comments. This is what it looks like when it's filled up. Yes, unfortunately, with a lot of the free tools, there's lots of ads. <laughs> Um, this is what it looks like. See all these students? These are all students. This is Jason Renshaw's, his TOE speaking practice. He puts the actual test questions up there, the listening ones, and they practice. Um, literally, a, he has a, over 100 students that um, respond to each of the questions. Question one, sample answer. He puts a question two, sample answer. And each of them go and then they record it. So you have the opportunity to practice with this tool. You can choose that one. The other option is you can answer the same questions, but instead in our voice thread. Now, um, there are some people who started their own voice thread. So if you started their own, then that's OK. Um, it's up to you, OK? Um, voice thread does it this way. It's a different looking one. So here's me. I'll start the first one. This is all online. But the great thing about VoiceThread that I like is it's also in your, um, if you have an iPad, you can download it for free on the iPad, and it's very easy to use. So VoiceThread allows you three options of, com well, four options of commenting. You can do it just simply by voice, which is what I usually do, and I have a picture up. Your students don't have to put a picture up. So I've used this with my four-year-olds, and they give you avatars. They look kind of like the ones from Monopoly. So <laughs> that's kind of nice. Um, and then you can either do it by text. You can write, and it'll show up. You can do it by video like this. You can do it just audio, which I usually do because I don't like to have makeup on and stuff all the time for <laughs> my video. Yes, all of these tools are absolutely free. So you can get, um, you can pay. You can pay for more. So if you, you want more features, then you can pay. Um, but I use the free things of everything. <laughs> you can upload videos, images, and documents for them to study. One of the ways that I've seen it used is um, Choose Your Own Adventures. Um, I did a digital storytelling project with my students, and we did it in um, Germany. The four to six year olds did it with six year olds, um, Ozge Karogula's class, who is in Istanbul, Turkey. And so they made an animal story together. And it was, uh, it was really great. The students, you could hear them speaking. Same thing, you register for account. It's very easy. Under five minutes, you can register. You can register for an education account as well. I think you have to. Um, and then these are the things that you can answer. What are your thoughts about the use of digital tools to improve listening skills? And make sure you try voice thread. Think of ideas. Share with us ideas of ways you can use it. So this is what it looks like. You, if you click on me, you're going to be able here. You can move to the next slide. If you click here, that's where you comment. So the commenting is on the bottom right here. You can doodle. You can write on it as well. So you choose the one that you think is best. A few ideas. You can share poems. Each Everybody can go around the circle and they can share their favorite poem. You can write a class poetry book. So if you're doing a poetry lesson, that's very good. If you're exploring um, the alphabet with kids. I've seen them do A, everybody contributes something to A. B, everybody contributes something to Reddit. You can upload papers, and students can work together, and they can give each other ideas on their paper because they can doodle. They can circle something and say, oh, I'd really like to know more about this character, Ben. Maybe you could tell us if you know Ben's characters and features so it ex you can use it to help them improve writing. Um, you can use it to circle grammar. Oh, I'm not really sure that that's the correct tense. Perhaps you want to try the present tense uh, versus the past participle or something like that. So there's a lot of things you can do. They can put their own book and movie reviews, how they, if you have them watch an English movie, then they can go and they can give you ideas. My favorite scene of this book was, we were studying um, Twilight or, or for example, um, Harry Potter. 
oh, well, my favorite scene is when they do this. Or I really disagree when Harry Potter does that. I really think that that. So, I mean, they can use, they can debate an issue. Um, one of the issues I saw in middle school in Beirut and in the U.S., they did, and they talked about um, wearing the burqa uh, and why that's good and why some do that and why some don't. So they had a little bit of a, a debate on that. A collaborative story. They can share customs and traditions. So I spy. You can put different paintings and then you can say, can you spy Mona Lisa smile? Why do you think she's smiling? So there's so much that you can do with this. So your post task. Now we know about the, the pre-task. Now we're going to look at the post task. So what can you do with the post task? You can create a listening game or quiz for your learners. I prefer you to do the game. Uh, I think your students will find that uh, really a great uh, way to learn. Um, and if you saw that, like the Wonder Pets, um, they don't realize when they're playing a game that they're learning. But look, these kind of games are so motivational. If you think about students, uh, one of the studies that they showed, they did research, and they found that millions of language learners learned English just by paying, playing World of Warcraft. And the reason why they, so now you see all these lessons with World of Warcraft, and the reason why is because every day they would spend five hours playing this game. And with the game, you listen to others from around the world, and you have to work with them to build things, to accomplish stuff. So if you create a game, I would love for you to create a game. But if you find that too challenging or you think, oh, that's overwhelming, I can't do that right now, then, or you don't have a lot of time, you can create a listening quiz, okay? I'm going to show you how to do that, how to create a listening quiz in five minutes, okay? After registration. So you have to register for one of these tools, and then. So how do I create a listening game or quiz? Very easy. We can do it in five minutes. But first of all, and maybe grab a piece of paper or grab something right now, because I need you to think about and reflect and answer these questions. And this is about your situation because this is going to tell you what kind of tool that you want to choose from the five. Or you can choose your own as well. Sorry. I know in, in uh, I'm sorry, I know in Greece. I lived in Greece, so I only have, I, sorry about my hand thing. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to assess your, your situation. You can even write it in here if you want. You can add the responses in the chat box. That's fine. But this is for your situation. What is your teaching situation? Okay. So consider this. Are you working with a computer or do you have a mobile device? Can your students learn with a mobile device? So that's the first question you need to answer. And the reason why you need to answer that is because if it's a mobile device, there, there are some really great tools that I'll show you um, how to use with them. But if there's, that's an app. So um, you wouldn't use the app if you can't do a mobile device. Um, if you, but if you do have a mobile device, I recommend you creating the game on the mobile device because um, they're faster. It'll actually take you an incredible, like, little time to do it. Okay, so if mobile devices are forbidden, then you're working with a computer. What is your internet speed? Um, because that's going to be very, very important as well. Um, what is the technology that is available to your students? Are they going to have at home? Do they have um, internet access? Do they have a computer? Do you have time to take them to the computer lab to play the game? Or do they have to do this on their own time? So these are all questions that you have to think about. So if, if they're going to do this at home, then you may want to get a game that you can put in a little flash drift. And so some of these games are flash-based, and you can actually... Um, the flash disks are very cheap, so that's one thing. If, if you can create it using your internet, and then after that, after with some of the games, then you can have them put it, you can put in a CD or something like that, and you can give it to your students to use. Now, I'm trying to show you my flash drive. Um, you know, and I'll do that for my schools. Um, like I said, I've worked in 26 countries, so the students don't have access to, um, to, for example, the Internet, then I actually buy them flash drives um, because they're very cheap. I always go to the one euro, one dollar store, Amazon, you can buy a whole bunch of them for less. And I put all of their assignments there um that they can use so that way they don't give me the excuse and say teacher can't do it so you can put it in this okay 
and, and they're very, very inexpensive. So those are, um, if they don't have access to internet, that's an option. So you can do that. The next thing you need to ask yourself, so uh, now that you know the technology, now we need to know about um, what you want your learners to accomplish. So think of any task. You can think of ones that they haven't done yet, or you can think of one that you do every year. Uh, for example, if you always use the present perfect tense, or something that your students really struggle with, um, because it's a game or it's a quiz, so it's supposed to get them to practice more. Something they really, really um, maybe it's a sound that, that they need to practice. You can do anything. Um, it's to listening. So you want them to do something that um, that you will use in class, okay? Um, now, there's different ways you can use listening. So your game can help build vocabulary. If you want them to learn a certain, a certain set of vocabulary words, you can use a game to do that. So you can choose a vocabulary list. You can have them respond to a conversation and see if they can interpret what was in the conversation. If you want them to identify sounds or accents, okay. Um, if you want them to interpret information, perhaps it's a recorded lecture um, that you use, and you want them you want them to go and hear your recorded lecture, and you want them to um, see if they understood parts of the lecture. Um, comprehend recorded material, learn intonation. Um, and part of the recorded material is often videos, so we can use YouTube videos. So how do we do this? Well, here's the five tool that you can choose from. Now that you've assessed that, now that you've answered all these questions, now you can choose which is going to be the best tool for you. Now these are the five I recommend. You don't only have to use these tools, you can use other tools as well. So you can use Blubber. Blubber works with YouTube videos. ESL Video works with YouTube videos. These are going to be your simplest um, listening quizzes that you can make. Okay. Scratch is a game creator. Um, so you can create a game with that. So is Tiny Tap and so is Adventure Game. Tiny Tap is the game um, that you use if you have a mobile device. Now you do have to have an iOS mobile device for that. Um, okay, so this is Blubber. Blubber.tv, uh, really quick, you can do this in five minutes. You choose a YouTube video, that usually takes me the longest. Um, excuse me, the longest part of it is me deciding which YouTube video, but you can use any YouTube video, and all you do after you register on Blubber is you add the link to the YouTube video, and then after, it, what it does is it breaks it in 16 seconds. So every 16 seconds, you create the assessment. This is what it looks like. And it shows like it'll play that. So in this one, um, they're doing it, for example, for business English. She's doing an interview. They found a YouTube online. They didn't create it. They just took a video, any of the millions of videos on YouTube. Actually, I think there's 9, bi 9 billion videos now on YouTube, actually, I think was the biggest quote. So you have 9 billion to choose from <laughs> to study any um, lesson. Um, and literally in five minutes you choose, you make a quiz for it. So here it's, it, they listen to the, the interview and in 16 seconds they say in the first few seconds what two things did she do wrong? And so they had to um, assess with their eyes as well but also with their ears. So it's doing that Chinese symbol, the undivided attention. Um, if it's business English and this is a class of business English students, it's something that's um, important to them. It's something that they're really going to relate to. Okay, so we're almost finished. Um, so Blubber is one of the easiest ones to do. This is ESL video. It works the same way, except it doesn't have the question pop out. I like Blubber a little bit better. You can embed it in your uh, sites and stuff as well. It's a free tool. Um, ESL video, you can create. It comes with the questions. The great thing about ESL video is it comes with transcripts and notes. So you do register, and then you make this video quiz. You can choose from any of their video quiz, by the way. You can choose from any of the Blubber ones as well um, to add to your own wikis. So you can embed that in any site, or it'll be up there on, the, on these particular sites. Um, this is with the transcript slide, so it it's them as well. You can try the games. You can say whether you like them or not, and you can even add notes. And then this is what Scratch looks like. Scratch is the only one you do not have to register. You can create a video. Uh, this is to create a listening game. They have tons of listening games there. I'll show you what one looks like. 
Um, but Scratch looks like this. So you choose a character. You can even add characters that your students draw, which I love. <laughs> um, so wait, Scratch is really wonderful. You can make games for advanced learners, for beginners. Um, you choose the character. They have a bunch of characters. You put them in costume. And then you can add scripts and you add sounds. And basically, you just put the script. What do you mean? So if you want them to jump over something, then it gives you all of that. You just click that, um, and then it, you can add it. This is going to take longer than five minutes. This is going to be if you can invest 30 minutes. Um, the, oh, and you, you know what? Sylvia said a really great thing. Have your students learn it. Your students can create games, um, which is wonderful. It's really, really wonderful. So this is another option. Um, and if you want to make a game, you can use, so those are what it looks like as well. See, you can do blocks, you can do motion, you can do pens, events, control. Um, the great thing about Scratch, okay, if you wanted to do a game, if you wanted to do a game and you didn't have enough time, Scratch has thousands of games. And what you can do is you can remix the game. So if you see a game on there you like and you say, wow, that's really cool, but it'd be better if I could do this, you can actually click on it. And then you can add to the game. You can edit the game. So you don't even have to create your own game from the beginning. You can take somebody else's game, and you can make it to where it's great for yours. This is one of the games I saw. Now, this is the French alphabet. And what they do is um, the teacher makes a sound, and she's, the student has to choose the letter. So you can make something very simple like that. They choose the letter that is that sound. Um, and then there's adventure games. Adventure games you actually download, but it'll allow you to make cool games like the one. And this will take 30 minutes as well. But the great thing is that with any of the adventure games, you can play them as well. You can play them offline. It works with um, with the flash disk. So that's something very good as well. Um, but you can make things like the Wonder Pet. So if you really are excited and you're someone like me who wants to go for it and give the full hour and see what you can do and have over 2,000 people, uh, you know, you, you can, because we're going to play each other's games. So we're going to see what each other makes. And um, I think that's one of the best parts of this task is now you can have, you can do what you want. It's up to you. You can do something that takes five minutes or you can put in 30 minutes and come up with adventure game and we can play it and it'd be awesome. Um, the one thing about adventure games is you do have to have a PC. It is not going to work in a Mac. So if you don't have a Mac, then, uh, I mean, if you have a, a Mac, then you can't do adventure games. I'm sorry. <laughs> it looks really cool. They rate the games. You can see the cool games they have there, and they're so amazing. And then finally, the last one. If you have a mobile device and it's like an iPad or an iPad mini or something, the easiest way you can do this in less than five minutes is to use Tiny Tap. Tiny Tap is awesome. It's my favorite app right now for making listening games. You can add your own pictures. A little girl that was six made this one. She has a nose and she says, O foto. And then, you know, when you, you can click it on, when you click the vocabulary, it comes up with balloons and it says, Yay! Awesome! You got it right! So the great thing about Tiny Tap is you make this incredible listening game. It's so much fun. They can play it online. So they don't have to have the mobile device to play this. They don't have to have an iPad or anything. You can make it on the iPad. So if you can borrow someone's iPad, then they can still play this online. Anybody can. In fact, you can go to tinytap.it and you can find all the excellent types of listening games they have there. You can record your own voice. You can record a question, an answer, a hint. It has 20 different soundtracks. It has music for you. It has track progress using the in-system game. And what I like to do is I look at their games that people have already created and I say, wow, I love this game. And I just take that idea and make my own game for my students. So these aren't things that you have to come up with by yourself. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap up here. Um, and the last part of this is listening with your mobile device. Um, mobile devices are an incredible way to develop listening. For my students, this was one of the things that really helped them become independent learners. And what I mean is one of the things that we use, and we didn't have to use the internet, was we just used the audio tool. So many of you don't realize 
And I've worked with refugees in Greece before. I've worked, I was doing uh, work with, um, uh, most recently in Croatia and Slovenia and in town that had very little technology, but they all had phones. And so that's what we use. So you can use something like um, the audio tool because most of your cell phones and stuff like that um, have those kind of things. So if you use that, um, that's something that you really want to do. Um, my listeners, some of the things I would put dictionaries, listening dictionaries, and they would say, um, Miss, thank you so much for doing that because when you did that, I no longer had to um, go back and look online. I just looked on my English dictionary when I was on the phone with a customer and I could use that English really fast. So that's some of the things that my students told me, which I thought was amazing because what it used to be before them using the mobile devices, they would come to class and they would say, how do you do this, how do you do that? But then it transformed to when they needed it, that's when they could take out their device and they would say, oh yeah, she taught us how to do it here. And they would look it up in the app. So that's what I really love. Um, Boxer is my absolute favorite tool that I use with language learners. Um, it's free, but if you get the paid version, then you can have up to 500 in a Boxer. Now I was going to try and do that, um, but I didn't for this one. What does Boxer do? Once you do Boxer, then one of the things you do is you do messages. All you do, it looks like this, and it's conversations with anybody. Your students can join, you can add them. You just simply press hold and talk. Hi, my name is Shelly. How are you doing? And then it plays. Hi, my name is Shelly. How are you doing? What you do is you switch it to the side. I can, Hi, my name is When you move it to the side, it gives you a link. So you can share that as a link. Your students respond back. This is Jake, uh, my boyfriend, uh, well, my fiance. And he's responding. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you like. Okay, cool. What's going on? Okay, so this is what he said. Okay, cool. What's going on? So there it goes. You can respond. You don't have to do it synchronous. You can do it all together. <laughs> he said, fiance. <laughs> so I love that. For kids, an even funner one that they love, 30 minutes, is um, sock puppets. I use this for language learners everywhere. They love this. They choose a different sock, and then they record a 30-second movie. They love it. The socks have different voices. You create, select any scene. It's very, very cool. Um, and then Chatter Picks. Chatter the Picks is the one where they can upload their own pictures, and then you click on the mouth, and you make the mouth talk. So that's what it is. I told you it's a buffet. It's a buffet. <laughs> and then I Patio. If you want to make podcasts really fast, um, your learners can do it with I Patio. Uh, the great thing about these mobile devices, so if you can get these free apps, you can get 60 minutes with this one. But um, the thing about it is that your students can use these tools. They can learn from them. Um, and, and these are tools that they love, um, EduCreation. So we're going to go ahead and end. I'm going to go ahead and put it because this is a lot. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but just a few ideas of listening tasks. There's actually thousands of listening tasks you can do with your learners every single day. Um, I put these all on a wiki. My learners love them. One of the great things that parents have put in feedback to me is me putting this on the wiki because you might be embarrassed or anything like I was. Is my parents said, um, they said, you know what, when we, my, I love doing this with my kids. Um, but also it shows that you really care about my kid and I really appreciate that. I've gotten that so many times, and I've gotten so many teachers who try one of the tools, and it just makes their class so much more engaging. There are students um, who they may have struggled with teenagers or something that weren't motivated to practice, and they're shy students. They tell me that also as well. They tell me the shy students. They say, um, you know, my shy students now talk. They now practice their listening. They now participate in class. And this is the kind of feedback I get. Um, they love coming to English class. They think English class is fun. And I always say, at the end of the day, if your students say, um, my English teacher is so fun and English class is fun, that is a very good thing. Because what you just taught them is learning is fun. They'll want to continue after your class to learn English. But there's other classes around, um, and, and 
it's not fun. So the students hate learning English. And I really think that's sad. So I'm showing you all these tools because I'm hoping that you can motivate your learners and get them to see that learning is fun. It's an adventure and it's a struggle, but it's also something that we want to motivate them to do every single day and outside of your class. So thank you so much for listening and I'll be um, answering your tasks and anything you want as well. You just have to let me know. Um, if you do get Boxer, by the way, then you can always talk to me on Boxer. Um, I talk with students online. The great thing is if you're connected on Twitter or Facebook and you use it, then it'll automatically like um, show you me. So <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> uh, but I look forward to your voice threads or your box of pops or your vocaroos, any way you want to answer it, um, and your games. I want to play your games. So that'll be very, very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's very cute. This is the love of my life, my child, uh, Roscoe the Pug. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Jace, did you need me to cover anything else? Or did you want to cover anything else? Jace, I can't hear you. <laughs> Not a tech problem. That was a, a stupidity problem. I just got it. Uh, <laughs> Turned on the and Demetrius Club EFL Demetrius wants to hear you laugh, so I'll try to be funny so we can hear your uh, attractive laugh. Everybody loves Shelly's smile and laugh for I good thank reason. Thank you, <laughs> Shelly. Yeah, thank you personally because I, I learned a lot myself, and I want to ensure everybody here that we will have um, this PowerPoint up so you can check it out the slides. And uh, anything that Shelly wants to put in courseware, she'll let me know, and I will put it up there. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you if this is your first time uh, meeting Shelly and hearing what she has to say and how she says it, how she engages and relates to teachers, I'm sure you're blown away right now. I saw some <laughs> I saw some incredible comments in there, not unexpected, like you've changed my world. You you know this Aww. is a, a whole new life now. For me. <laughs> Uh, don't be overwhelmed. The buffet you 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 consume at your own pace. I just put it in there. Consume at your own pace. Don't feel like I mean, Shelly, right? You didn't learn all this stuff at once, right? It's it's, no. it's going little by little, and um, yeah. But Shelly is uh, you know just extraordinary at communicating this in ways that make teachers feel oh, more included. Thank you. Uh, it's the truth, and everybody knows it. <laughs> Uh, and her, her, her humility is also one of her uh, appealing features. This is an amazing teacher and trainer, and we're so happy you were here, Shelly. Um, we have uh, a few more minutes, so let me just take a question or two. Let me see if we can just get a couple questions, if you don't mind. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Put her on the spot. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone I have a question? We can, uh, yes, a lot of requests for links. We will oh, embed okay. them. I don't know if you want to put it in the chat, Shelly, which we'll post. Yeah, but... I can do that. Okay. Uh, um, but also, but we can do it in the. Uh, yeah, let's just yeah. do it that way. We'll 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 make sure we put it up with an explanation of what it is. It'll be a lot more straightforward for everyone who's watching the the recording later. Yeah. Thanks for all your thanks. It was really um, watching this and uh, watching Shelly, whom I love to watch, and then watching what she's talking <laughs> about, and then the chat was really uh, uh it was just electric today so um oh, really thanks great. to Thank everybody you. nobody wants to ask you a question they just want to uh, shower you with praise so that's nice too. <laughs> teachers like that right since we're all teachers yeah no, absolutely <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she she has an intuitive sense of the chat. I mean, she is an online professor, as she said early on, and uh, so many of you, uh, I feel, will be as well. So to have her here as a guide for us uh, is is really special. Um, Pre-class task, is it okay if it's written? We have a question from Fatima. Can it be uh, spoken yes. or written? Yes, actually you can, but um, what I, I, I would recommend, if you could, and I put an example, if you could even do Bukuru, you don't have to register for Bukuru. In fact, it's very intuitive. I try to upload the slide, but I don't think it added it. Um, okay. It was a picture of Bukuru, but as soon as you go to Bukuru.com, um, it's just it's simple. Um, it just You just click record. You don't even yeah. have to... So if Google you could respond really even to that and then put the link in the chat of your Bukuru, um, it because we want to try the audio tools.
So yeah. at the last possible option is written, but I, I will respond to written. But I do think um, the Vukuru, uh, I mean, if you can do Vukuru, <laughs> then uh, I would, uh, that, that would be a great way to do it. Or if you use Boxy, uh, Boxer, then it gives you a link too, so you can record. And, and write too. And Shelly, you, you hang out a lot there, right? So if you want to connect yeah. there. Uh, there's also 30 Goals Challenge. There's Teacher Reboot Camp. There's the Friday <laughs> webinars. Uh, Shelly does so much for so many people. She talked about Vygotsky earlier, and she walks the walk with the scaffolding uh, as a teacher trainer. And so don't worry about feeling like there's so much here. Um, Shelly and Sylvia, Dr. Nelly, and everybody else who's here, you know, we can all help one another to, yes. to acclimate ourselves and, and, and use all these great tools. So. Um, I did get a question in the bottom about uh, Facebook. Okay, so I do have, um, I'm everywhere online. If you want to connect on Facebook, um, then then you can go to my page, which is Facebook.com. I'm putting it in, in the chat. But you can find me as Shell Terrell, my profile. Now, you have to let me know that you're my student. Um, because right now, I am... Um, um, with my position right now, I have uh, over, I don't know, nearly 50,000 now, I think I'm connected with on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. And I get a few stalkers, so I've had to, now you have to let me know in a message, you're my student, um, so I can um, so I can add you. Um, because if I don't know you're my student, then I might not put the request. So just let me know, okay? <laughs> Great. Yeah, and for uh, Twitter, especially if you're a teacher and we're all teachers here, really, you know, Ed Chat, uh, Shelly, Shelly founded that. Um, the ELT Chat is also, <laughs> she either co founded or, or keeps that going with Marisa and others. So lots of amazing stuff you can do when you follow Shelly and Wiz IQ. Shall we say goodbye? Yes, Wiz IQ. <laughs> Bye, have a great day. I'm looking forward to your games, everyone, and your discussion. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Peace and much respect. See you on the class page for Shelly, and we'll post the post class very soon. And see you tomorrow for our next webinar. Good night. Goodbye. Lots of love. ELTT. <laughs>